In 2013, Elon Musk published a paper in which he proposed a new form of high-speed transportation called Hyperloop. After publishing the paper, his company SpaceX announced a competition for student teams from around the world to design and fabricate their own Hyperloop vehicles. Within days of the announcement, a group of UW-Madison students joined together to form what is now Badgerloop. These students were highly motivated by the innovative challenge of creating a new mode of transportation. Utilizing any resources they could gather, the team began planning for the first Hyperloop competition. Now, six years after the first competition, Badgerloop has shifted its focus from being primarily a competition team to one of the most diverse, well-respected STEM education student organizations at UW-Madison. Badgerloop continues to provide an unparalleled hands-on learning environment for students from all academic backgrounds and levels of experience. Furthermore, Badgerloop is the only team in the world that consists almost solely of undergraduate students. Fresh off their success at the fourth competition in fall of 2019, where the team once again asserted their status as one of the premier Hyperloop build teams in the world, Badgerloop set out to work on their fifth pod design for the next competition. Unfortunately, due to the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, Badgerloop had to reevaluate and restructure their plans for the upcoming competition. All team meeting March 1st. Thanks everyone for coming. We'll get it going. First things first, um, hopefully everyone that's here has uh, taking a look at announcements and read the short novel that I posted on Sunday. Um, the basic summary, I'll, uh, I got another whole slide on this, so I'll just briefly touch on it. The, the, the shift is going to be building, constructing pod five, finishing it by the end of semester to a reveal ready state. That's 60 days away from today, just so everyone's aware. So we kind of met up as an executive team and had a little bit of a realization that it had been a year and a half and we hadn't produced a physical pod and we also seemed to be stuck in a rut and I think that was the the most important like realization for me personally is we were continuing to do the same thing essentially like spinning our wheels and there was no visible or like, there was progress but it wasn't like concrete in the sense of what we had been used to and so what Badgerloop has always been about, and it's like in our mission and goals as well, is fabricating a pod and the learning experiences that come with that for our members. Um, that's really what the whole org is about, is learning opportunities and developing us as students and people who be better engineers or business people or whatever your major might be. And so we met with the team leads and got everyone, we had a discussion amongst the team leads and executives and we, a lot of people bought it, a lot of people thought it was a good idea to continue, not continue, to move forward with building a Hyperloop pod, depend, despite how hard it might be given our limited time and uh, the resources as we're still uh, affected by COVID in terms of our access to the workspace. And so it's a, it was a little interesting, but in terms of a decision and its feasibility or possibility, so our goal began, or our goal started off as being finishing the pod by the end of the semester because that will, one, bring closure to all of the work that has gone into pod five. And for that's most important for our members and their work that, and the time and effort they put in. And then secondly, for our sponsors as well that had sponsored uh, that Hyperloop pod. And so our goal is finishing the pod even if it is not an ideal design for that 10 kilometer track like we had started off the year being. But we believe that the value gained by our members and those working with the organization to fabricate a pod by the end of this year will outweigh the potential of waiting and putting that off as well into a future date. Once we kind of made the decision to build a pod, there really wasn't that much time to waste because two months is an incredibly short time for us to build something that we generally probably have about six months to build. So as an exec team, we first kind of scheduled, all right, what, are, what do we have to have done by these key deadlines to hit our end goal of having a pod done by the end of April? And we kind of foresaw like the biggest hangup 
would be this manufacturing process of getting in touch with uh, machine shops and then actually like obviously the lead time to have them be able to build it. So we kind of started from there and then we figured out, okay, we have about two weeks to finalize designs um, and about another two to obviously talk to the machine shops. And then by the end of March now, we really need to be sending stuff out to get machined. We're nearing the end of our uh, fabrication process here for Pod 4 and uh, as such we're doing some system integration testing. So we have sort of a off the pod but fully connected electrical system which you can see behind me on the cart um, and sort of the shining star is the uh, propulsion motor here which is the, the main component of our test that we're about to run. So we're, we don't have our high voltage battery pack connected yet. Um, but we have a high voltage power supply and Eric over here is going to run some code which will hopefully run or hopefully spin this motor and then also which may be a little bit hard to visualize um, actuate our solenoids which if they were connected to the braking pistons would actuate the braking system. Um, so I think we should be ready to go. I will step over here. So uh, yeah, I'm going to engage the second. All right, controls is ready. All right, um, go for it. All right, three, two, one. Never mind. <laughs> Segmentation fall. It's gonna take me a second. Nice. So right now what's happening <laughs> is we are, when we're trying to run the program that, we're, that would fire the motor and then also the brakes, there is some bit of memory inside the processor on the board that's being mismatched. We're trying to access something that we shouldn't be allowed to, so there's some bug in the code there um, that is causing that, and I'm just trying to figure out what that is. So for the time that we have, um, we're going to aim to get this on the pod. Um, basically in the same electrical form that it exists in right now, um, but on the pod as it would be if we were going to run this in the tube. Um, from there, it is more or less a matter of software developments to um, basically verify the sequence of states we run through. Um, that basically everything um, from any input the pod gets, um, it will fail in a safe manner and act in, a, in a, our intended manner. Um, through basically anything that the pod could see. Um, there are a couple hardware bugs that we are still working through um, that um, we will try to attend to um, in the future. But um, as a whole, the electrical system um, is functional. We just want to get it on the pod. Good. All right. Three, two, one. discussion of if hypothetically there isn't a competition where does Badger Loop go? What do we do? And kind of given our circumstance we've had a lot of time to think about those scenarios and situations. Um, as unfortunate as it is but it's also I think in, in terms a great blessing that we've been able to do that as well because we've been able to go through and as an executive team we sat down and we thought what is Badger Loop all about? Why do our members come to Badger Loop? Why are they so intrigued with what we're doing? Why do they stick around? And I think what we gained from a lot of that was people love working with each other. Like I had mentioned before, they, they love working with all these engineers, all these incredibly smart individuals. They love working with the operations team and it, it really truly does feel like a startup. So that was kind of where we went towards, but it, and then it came down to, well, how do we continue that feel? How do we continue to move forward and progress? And basically what we found out was, was that According to the team and according to the executives too, as, as we discussed this, the best path forward is to build a pod. And then it kind of came down to, well, what's our timetable? Because 
we have to consider that we've been designing a completely different Pod 5 compared to what we're going to be building. Um, what do we do with a lot of those designs? Where does the um, performance design review kind of fall in within all of that? Where does our timeline fit in? And where can we give ourselves closure as a team for Pod 4 or for Pod 5 and then kind of progress forward into the next era, which is still going to be competition. And it's going to be very exciting. We're really, really excited for it when all, everything lifts and we can finally get back in, into building again and, and, and building more as a, as, a, as a group as opposed to like specific individuals going in. But from what we found out was that based on the time frame, we still have time to build a pod. And we can build a really good pod. We can use our brand new electrical system that we've been designing from Pod 5. We can implement that within our, our Pod 4 system. We can go through and look at Pod 4 and we can determine what systems within it needed mechanically to be fixed and we were able to go through and actually find areas that we can actually implement improvements on and actually go through and build it into. So it's been really fantastic because we've been able to shift really rapidly and I think it's like any previous time of building a pod. Whereas you always come down to the crunch time and you have to go through and you actually have to make sure that everything's in place. And it's very challenging to do that because you, you have to organize a lot of people. You have to make sure that you have all these parts manufactured and you have to make sure that everything is in the right place at the right time. And obviously that's a very difficult situation to go through, but basically what we've had gone through is we have a lot of planning in place within our purchasing teams to make sure that we can go through and have a lot of these items purchased in, in place and on time. And then we, well, we also have great sponsors that are coming in and helping us manufacture a lot of our parts, which is absolutely fantastic and has been a really, really great aid. And then we also have really hardworking and dedicated individuals. And I think like you can have all the monetary help that you need, you can have a lot of the material help, but what it really comes down to is the people that go in and actually implement these material, monetary or material items that are, are given to us. So in the end, I think kind of going off of your original question here is it's going to take a lot of hard planning, a lot of really diligent planning, a lot of really hard set deadlines that we've had. We currently already have a lot of very hard set deadlines, but I think coming up very soon, it's going to be very straight to the point, very quick. And it's, we're going to have to be very agile. We're going to have to have great communication amongst the team. And I, in the end, like I had said before too, was we have, to, we have to come together as a team. We all have to work together and we all have to do our part. And if we can do that, I genuinely believe that we can build a fantastic pod within the 60 days, which is something that, I mean, you can, it, I don't think it's really been done by Badger Loop before, whereas we've, we've shifted from our design phases and we've progressed onwards to this incredibly intricate build phase. And it's, it's very exciting. So it, it's, I think in the end, to get this done, we just really need to work together. We need to have a great deal of excitement and we have to want to do this. And I think that we have all three of those. And I, I think it's gonna, it's gonna make a really great kind of just like a cauldron here that we can kind of go through and then build this pod. So right now we're just trying to put on the finishing touches for the pod, just attached the black paint this week, drilled a couple holes on it for uh, the final electrical components that will turn the high voltage system on and off. So once all that stuff gets inserted, the cover can go on and we can finally go forward with our reveal stuff. As far as like mechanical challenges, I guess there have been uh, too many. Um, I just flipped around the braking system because that was on backwards, but I don't know. If that's the hardest thing I run into, I'm pretty happy. Reveal's five days, so hopefully once we get this stuff wired up, we can take the pod out to Atrium, get some cool shots of it, and you know, we're ready to go.